While I was attending the CIOE trade show in September of 2024, I came across this device at Guide Infrared's booth. It is a 640 resolution thermal monocular with a variable optical zoom lens with a zoom range of 20 to 60 millimeters. I immediately knew this was probably one of the most useful thermal devices out there, and hence, I had to get one. This is the Guide TJ660LZ. It, along with the infrared zoom, are among the first thermal devices with variable optical zoom to hit the market. The TJ660 with a 3x zoom ratio currently has the widest zoom range of all the units. Alright, let's unbox this unit and see what comes in the box. When you order a unit from Guide directly, this is the box they will ship it in. It's pretty nice to see some factory labels and seals. Opening up the shipping box, you'll find a unit in its retail packaging inside. And inside the retail packaging, you'll find the unit itself, as well as two accessory boxes containing the two 18650 batteries you need to run the unit, some cables and power adapters, as well as this really nice dual slot 18650 battery charger. Hmm, yep, they really give you everything you need to run this unit in the box. Now, let's talk about the flagship feature of the TJ660LZ. It's 3x variable optical zoom lens. <laughs> this is the feature I've been waiting for for so long in a thermal unit. The variable optical zoom is actuated via a zoom ring at the front of the lens assembly. You have a choice of 20 or 60 millimeters as your focal lengths. And well, before we get into the tests and comparisons, let's have some fun with thermal plane spotting. This should give you a pretty good idea of the zoom capabilities as well as image quality of the unit. Alright, now let's put the advantages of the TJ660LZ zoom lens into perspective. Most thermal monoculars on the market are like this Hike Micro GQ35L. They typically have a fixed, long focal length objective lens that gives you a pretty zoomed in image. They may be good for detecting and identifying targets at longer distances, but their tiny fields of view means that they're not really well suited for situational awareness or high volume scanning. On the other side of the spectrum, we have wide field of view thermals meant for helmet mounting or head mounting applications. The iRay thermal core in the ADM VGF31 Fusion Bino, for example, has a 40 degree field of view. This means that it's really well suited for situational awareness and high volume scanning, but the low image magnification means that it's not really well suited for identifying targets at long range. And combining the advantages of both, we have the TJ660LZ. It has a lens that can zoom from 20 to 60 millimeters, which gives you a field of view of 22.5 degrees on the wide end, giving you an optical magnification of 1.5x to 7.2 degrees on the narrow end, giving you an optical magnification of around 4.5 times. To compare the three devices, we've come to an artificial lake. ISR has picked up some waterfowl at an artificial island in the middle of the lake, so let's see how well these three devices can detect them or identify them. And just to note, the waterfowl are approximately 140 meters away from the observation point. Alright, and first up we have the GF31. This is a wide field of view unit meant for head mounting and it gives you insane amounts of situational awareness with its 40 degree field of view. However, the unit's low optical magnification means that while it is able to detect the heat sources coming from the waterfowl, it is not really able to identify them. The waterfowl are simply just appearing on the screen as little white dots. 
All right, next up, let's see how well the GQ35L performs. The GQ35 with its 35 mm lens and 10 degrees of field of view is actually able to identify the waterfowl at this distance. When we crop in, we can actually see the distinctive head, neck and body of the waterfowl. However, the limited 10 degree field of view of the unit means that you need to pan around quite a lot to scan any meaningful volume of space, which takes time. Hence, if you need a device that can give you rapid situational awareness of your surroundings, the GQ35L isn't for you. Now, let's see how the zoom lens on the guide at TJ660LZ combines the advantages of the previous two units. At 20mm on the wide end, the lens gives you a 22.5 degree field of view at 1.5x magnification. While this is nowhere near as wide as what you'll find on a GF31, it is still quite a lot wider than what most thermal monoculars currently on the market will give you. Hence, it's actually quite useful for quick volume scanning to attain situational awareness of your surroundings. And when you do find a heat source while scanning, you can now zoom in optically to identify it. At 60mm when zoomed in, this lens actually gives you higher magnification than most other thermal monoculars out there which typically top out around 50mm. This makes identifying even smaller targets at range quite easy for this unit. Here, you can clearly identify the heat sources in this picture as waterfowl. And not only that, you can also see what they are doing, like whether or not they're alert and looking around or they're just dipping their heads into the water. Now, let's see how good the reach of the TJ660LZ is. To do that, we've come to this mountain that overlooks a park. ISR is picking up some people at the park as well as some animals at this enclosure. These are all some distance away from the mountain, so let's see how well the TJ660LZ as well as the two aforementioned thermal devices can pick them up. Alright, let's start at the animal enclosures which are around 560 meters away from the observation point. At this distance and on the 60mm lens setting, human targets are still easily identifiable. And we can also see that there are animal heat signatures inside the animal enclosures. The thermal core on the head-mounted ADNV GF31 on the other hand can't really pick up anything out this far. Then again, the thermal module on the GF31 was never meant for seeing out this far. Its purpose is to supplement the main night vision sensors of the GF31 with thermal fusion. Alright, and now on to the Hike Micro GQ35L. At this distance, we can see that it can still pick up and identify human targets. However, the animals in the enclosure are only showing up as little white dots, not really exactly identifiable. Whereas on the TJ660LZ, you can still tell that it's an animal heat source with a head and body. Now, let's push things out even further. This is the park entrance at around 670 meters away, and here we see that the TJ660LZ can still reliably identify human targets. And here's a comparison to the other units. In this case, I have to apologize for the GQ35L absolutely shitting the bed. It somehow decided to skip 90% of the frames in the video and record it in fast motion, so we're just gonna have to live with a still frame. And yeah, at more than 600 meters of distance, the GF31 with a wide field of view lens isn't really able to pick out human targets. Then again, that isn't its purpose. And moving on to the GQ35L, the human heat signatures are starting to become dots and are barely recognizable as humans anymore. Alright, now let's talk about the sensor that's on the TJ660LZ. It uses a 640x512 resolution 12 micron pixel pitch sensor that's pretty typical of high-end monoculars nowadays. What is new is that this new generation of sensors from Guide it now has an NETD of less than 20 millikelvins. This means that these new sensors are now more sensitive and can image smaller differences in temperature, namely down to 20 millikelvin, than previous sensors which all have NETDs of 35 to 50 millikelvins. A small NETD number is especially useful in a scene like this where there is low thermal contrast between your target and the background. Here, the pavement has been under the sun all day and is hence quite hot, yet the unit is still able to clearly distinguish the dogs in the scene. 
A lower NETD figure also tends to give you better image quality. Namely, it gives you better micro contrast in the picture and lets you see fine details better. Like in this scene where we can clearly see the details in the dog's fur, in the grass, as well as a clearly delineated pool of drool the dog has been leaving behind. And to further showcase the image quality of the TJ660LZ, I've come to a zoo to stare at animals with this unit. Let's go! Give you a good time Give you a good Give you a good time Alright, now let's talk about the controls and walk through some of the features on the TJ660LZ. Alright, and let's start at the very front of the unit where we have a zoom ring on the front of the lens. This allows you to switch the lens between the 20 and 60mm focal length modes. And behind the zoom ring is the focus ring. You turn this to adjust the focus of the objective lens. And at the rear of the unit, you have a diopter adjustment ring. You turn this to adjust the diopter of the eyepiece to match your eyesight. On the left side of the unit, you have a removable battery cartridge that takes two standard 18650 cells that should give the unit up to 10 hours of battery life. And on the bottom of the unit, you can find a USB-C port that can be used to charge your unit or offload pictures or videos you have recorded on the unit. And if you were wondering how we were getting precise distance measurements in our earlier observation tests, this is how. This is a laser rangefinder module that can measure ranges of up to 1000 meters. Now, let's talk about the cluster of buttons on top of the unit that lets you interface with most of the unit's functions. The button at the very front is the power button. Long pressing it lets you turn the unit on and off, and short pressing it lets you knock the unit manually. When you're not in the menu system, the up arrow key controls the digital zoom. Short pressing the up arrow key cycles you through the digital zoom in power of 2 increments. And pressing and holding the up arrow key lets you zoom in slowly and smoothly. Also, when you're not in the menu system, short pressing the down arrow key turns on the laser rangefinder, and long pressing it turns off the laser rangefinder. And towards the rear of the unit, you have a camera button. Short pressing it takes a picture, and long pressing it starts and stops the video recording. And now onto the menu button in the center. Short pressing it lets you access the quick menu, and long pressing it lets you access the general settings menu. The quick menu lets you access options and features most relevant to observation and detection. Here, you can do things such as change color palettes, adjust your rangefinder settings, change your image enhancement modes, Turn hot track on or off, which puts a box around the hottest object in the scene. And also turn object outline on or off. I personally leave this off since I think it's a gimmick and doesn't look that good. The quick menu also lets you turn on the picture in picture mode. And in the general settings menu, you get more fine control over the other functions of the unit. Here, you can do things such as adjusting the brightness and contrast of the viewfinder screen, as well as turn image sharpening on or off. You can enable or disable automatic knocking. Select whether or not you want your video recordings to include audio and on-screen UI elements. And as well as general things such as erasing the built-in memory and also changing the language of the UI. <laughs> I admit that this video is just me gushing all over this unit so far, but it's not perfect. I do have some gripes with this unit. And first of all is the size and weight. This unit is a chunker. It is by far the largest and heaviest thermal device I own. But then again, we have to keep in mind that it has a thermal zoom lens. A zoom lens is going to be a lot more complex with more elements than a prime lens typically found on lower end thermal devices. Another major gripe I have with the unit lies with its eyepiece. While it does have a pretty big OLED display in the viewfinder, the ocular lens magnifying this display isn't that great. 
while it does give you a pretty filling and immersive view of the scene if you press your eyeball right against the eye cup, the moment you displace your eyeball to the rear or to the sides, the limited eye box of the eyepiece means you'll start seeing edge distortion. Then again, this is an issue with all handheld thermal monoculars out there. The flagship Hike Micro GQ35L isn't better despite having a lower magnification eyepiece. But despite its shortcomings, this unit is still currently the most versatile handheld thermal monocular out there. Hence, I have zero regrets getting it.